Mm. I don't know if you, I don't know if you believe that. Cause if all of a sudden, again, white people started moving to India and changing what Indian culture is. Like you've already complained about Indian culture becoming too westernized. Yeah, but that's again And Japanese it's... people started coming and then making it a little more Japanese. Like Andrew Schultz gets into a fiery debate with comedian Akash Singh and the panel about immigration and its impact. Schultz makes a solid point about the importance of protecting culture and identity. But one of the panelists comes back with a response that's well, kind of out there. It's cool to see Schultz not shying away from these kinds of conversations, even when they're a bit controversial. Let's check out how it all went down. I'm going to cut you off because India got imperialized, got conquered. India was supposed to have an entirely different trajectory. It got robbed, pillaged, raped, fucked. Now I have a sensitivity to it. England didn't get imperialized, robbed, pillaged, raped, fucked by any of these foreigners for sure coming in. No Indian oh. country... That's not true, but... You're bringing in Indians when you have the British Empire, for sure. But, I mean, like, of course the Roman Empire yeah, conquered the Roman. them. I mean, they... Yeah, yeah not there's... by... But not... Exactly. Not by the people that you don't like. He doesn't have a problem with Romans, Italians coming over. No, he does. He has a problem with Italians. Yeah, so... You think those guys that each, are rioting... He's saying each country... Like, if Italians came and made England Italian, he has an issue with it. He doesn't like the no-border policy. He doesn't. So he's like every country that fought for their identity should be able to uphold that identity. The people he's defending, were, they don't have a problem with Italians. The people he's saying, I understand where they're coming from and sympathizing with. But that, I, I'm not going to argue on them. Uh, but I, that's who he's supporting. Defending. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, what I'm just saying, I, I hear what you're saying. But what, his argument about a nation being able to fight for its identity. And if it doesn't. By not accepting large amounts of immigrants, they are looked at as racist. I don't know if they should be looked at as racist. I, I, if the idea of fighting that war was to preserve the English identity and accepting large groups of people from other countries is naturally going to chip away at that singular identity. I understand the logic behind it. That could be one of the many emotions, but I do think there's some racism involved in the same way that, like, they're not going to be upset at the Italian restaurant opening up in their neighborhood. You, you've made that argument. I, I, I'm not saying that. Uh, I'm making. But, and this is just to what I'm saying earlier. That's a great premise. I can't find a ton of holes in it. A comedian has a great premise. You can't just find the holes in it. Right. It's fun. But we both know at the end of the day, this is not like a real thing this person believes or you should know. If See, you're enjoying this content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. It really helps me out a ton. That's, I don't like getting into those arguments where it's like we're going to assume what they really mean. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to have the argument based on, like, the words that are said, which is does a country like does Hawaii have the ability to maintain their Hawaiian culture? And when Western culture starts to come in or even Japanese culture, where these other cultures start to chip away at the Hawaiian identity, do they have the right to be frustrated with that or are they raised? Andrew Schultz is raising a really simple question here. Does a country have the right to protect its culture and identity through its borders? That's literally what borders are for, to create space for different ways of life to coexist. Meanwhile, Akash Singh keeps sidestepping the actual point bringing up unrelated stuff about who supports what or what someone else did. It feels like one of those classic dodge-the-question moves, and honestly, it doesn't address what's being asked. The whole point Schultz is making isn't complicated. It's about whether a nation has the right to say, hey, this is how we live and we need some boundaries to maintain that. Without borders, what's the point of having a national identity? It's not about shutting people out. It's about protecting the core of what makes a place unique. I think Schultz is on to something here. He's asking a basic question that deserves a straightforward answer. But Singh seems hesitant to tackle it head on, maybe because it's a tough one to argue against. What do you think? Should nations have the right to protect their identity? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Frustrated. Yeah, but again, you're, you're talking about a colonized place that was in, uh, like, that's where the difference is. Okay. It just Remove is different. colonization. Like, just, but you, but, just but you do cannot. a thought experiment. Just do a thought experiment. Hey, yeah, as a thought experiment, if they had never been colonized, don't worry about it. Everybody's been colonized. So that cancels out everybody. I mean, they're still colonized, like right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is why these things are so difficult. It's really hard to, to just even hypothetically discuss it. Like if Mexico got mad at a bunch of Americans moving in, I would honestly be like, eh, 
It's, it's just a country changes. Like Mexico has been its own country for a long time. Eh, country changes. It's not Indians moving into England where it's like, well, we have to come here because you actively took all of our jewels. They're still in your fucking palace. So I have more opportunity here. I'm coming. I think those jewels are doing anything. Uh, India like was a wealthy. Jewels are going to help two billion. I hate this India. revisionist <laughs> history where England, India was wealthy and then yeah, now India all was, of a sudden they're yeah, broke. Yeah. What, do you, what is How is that now <laughs> yeah. all of a sudden? Like, what are you even talking about? I mean, look at Africa. Like, they took all their resources and Africa is still a poor country, uh, continent. I mean, like, I just know that you don't have anything to substantiate that. So it's like, there's no way to, to, we're living in like a world where like, there's no way to prove the trajectory would have gone completely positive. There could have been infighting. I don't know if it would have been completely positive, but it would have been, I said it was just completely different trajectory. I didn't say it was worse. Right. Completely different trajectory that they did not have control of. In that situation with Mexico, like I would totally understand if mexico is like hey i don't want you chipping away at our culture like i think that is happening a little bit. i think some mexicans are mad at the like el salvadorians like come up and like they take over like long claves or something i was talking about mexican buddy he's like yeah like there's like they have like immigrants that are moving through and they yeah. get annoyed by it i don't uh, know if it's all of mexico i doubt it but. and 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 again we're different in especially like new york because this is part of our identity We've had these different groups of people that we fully embrace coming in here and becoming part of the fabric of what it is to be an American from the beginning. Even when we went west, there's Mexicans, there's Native Americans, there's always the, all these different people. Even when we're uniting the country, we were colonies of different countries, so there are different cultures for us to even handle. You go down to New Orleans and there's like French speakers. Like there's just all this different stuff that we've had to deal with. So this is our idea of what a country is. Some of the, some of these scoop the bagel ass people like they, <laughs> that's they, yeah, yeah, scoop yeah. the bagel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get the that, fuck that, out of yeah. yeah. that. That's racist. Yeah. 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 Get, get those, get those people out of there. <laughs> but I, I, so I do think we're projecting our idea of like acceptance on other countries that are just like, Hey, listen, we've worked thousands of years to curate this identity and we don't want to water that identity down. Andrew Schultz raises an important point here. But it seems like Akash Singh is focused on the idea that everyone's a victim of something if you dig deep enough into history. While that might be true to some extent, it doesn't really address the issues we're dealing with today. Constantly looking back doesn't help us figure out how to move forward. Schultz is talking about culture and identity, things that define how people live, interact, and shape their communities. When you bring in a large number of people with completely different customs and values without integrating them, it can create challenges. We've seen this in parts of Europe, where some cities have struggled with safety and cultural differences after mass immigration. Now some of those countries are rethinking their approach because the impact is undeniable. The reality is that culture matters. It influences everything from laws to social norms. If you suddenly introduce a drastically different culture without any plan to adapt or find common ground, the identity of a place can change. And that's what Schultz is pointing out. It's not about being against anyone. It's about protecting the values and traditions that make a community what it is. I appreciate Schultz for being willing to tackle these tough topics, especially when so many people shy away from them. These conversations are important and worth having. Let me know in the comments what you think about Schultz's argument and the discussion with the panel. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.